nations implement European legislation controlling landfill and have been introduced across the UK. Although waste producers should be aware that there are some minor but important regional variations. Waste destined for landfill must undergo treatment to reduce its potential environmental impact. In most circumstances, landfills cannot accept untreated waste. The waste producer has a legal responsibility under the duty of care to ensure the proper disposal of their waste and to accurately describe the waste when it's passed on to someone else, such as a waste contractor. In addition, before waste can be sent to landfill, waste producers and landfill operators must ensure that they know all of the properties of the waste which have the potential to cause pollution or harm to health. So, before making any decisions about the management and disposal of waste, the producer needs to know its characteristics. Characterization of the waste is an essential first step as it will influence how the waste is packaged, transported, handled, treated, recycled or disposed of. This means considering questions such as what is it composed of? What's the physical and chemical nature of the waste? Is it defined as inert, non-hazardous or hazardous? Providing a basic characterization of the waste is a legal requirement and is defined in the regulations. The producer of the waste is responsible for ensuring the accuracy of this waste characterization. Although, in practice, the waste contractor often carries out testing and finalizes the characterization on behalf of the waste producer. It should include at least these 12 categories of information from A to L. With the help of the Environment Agency, we're going to go through each section step by step. So, one question remains to be answered, and that is C, the pre-treatment applied. That was because we said to decide on the most appropriate treatment option, it would be better to have an understanding of the characteristics and composition of the waste first. In order for waste to, to meet the requirements of pre-treatment, it must be set against a three-point test. And what that three-point test says is that firstly, the waste must undergo either a physical, biological, chemical or thermal treatment. That treatment must alter the characteristics of the waste and also that must do so in order to facilitate its handling, to reduce its volume or to enhance recovery. Also, to lessen its hazardous nature. Now, to give some examples, sorting would be regarded as, as successful pretreatment and meet the requirements because it is a physical process. You're also altering the characteristics of the waste because if you've got a pile of waste and you take things out, then the characteristics of the waste have been altered because it's not the same as before you sorted it. Uh, it also uh, enhances recovery because the material that you take out of that waste, you should send off uh, at least one of those waste streams for recycling. Neither would these waste plastic drums be acceptable as treated at the landfill simply because they are a separate waste stream. This is not like the odd few drums that have been removed from a skip of mixed waste. This is a large quantity of homogenous waste and it's unlikely that this number of containers would ever be mixed with other types of waste. To pass the test, these drums need to undergo a treatment, such as cleaning, to remove any residue. This is a physical activity which will change their characteristics and enhance the potential for recovery, as clean drums can be safely recycled, which is the whole purpose of the legislation. If you've had to put in this amount of effort, you might as well recycle the drums anyway instead of sending them to landfill. In practice, and to ensure compliance with the landfill regulations and the duty of care, Everyone involved in the decision to send waste to landfill should know where and how it will be treated.